I am not a preacher because I took an aptitude test and they decided I'd better be a preacher. I was married, had two children, and the Lord called me to preach. I'm as certain that the Lord has called me to preach as I am that I'm standing here. My call to the ministry was not a sensational thing. I had no visions. My hair did not stand on ends. But I had a tremendous burden to see people saved. And the burden grew stronger. And then with the burden came a desire to preach. Somebody said, happy is a man whose ambitions do not exceed his abilities. But in that case, my ambitions did exceed my abilities. I had no ability to preach. But I saw a need. Being a pastor with me is not a job, it's a ministry. Somebody said, do you work for a living? And I said, no. I work for God. He takes care of my living. If I was working for a living, I'd be an idiot. I'd get a better job. I'd make more money in less hours with more benefits than I'll have here. Did you know it's possible that I may someday be voted out of here and I may not have a place to go and I don't have any retirement program so if it was a job with me I'd change it's a ministry <clears throat> I tell the people who come to work here if you're looking for a job you're looking in the wrong place if you're looking for a ministry you're looking for the right place I hope that everybody here from our janitor on up considers what he's doing in this church or in Forest Hills Christian Schools or even in Baptist University, I hope he considers it as a ministry. Amen. It has to be that way. I do believe that God has given me a burden for preachers. I love preachers. If someone had told me two or three years ago that I'd be speaking to a group of preachers every week almost, I would have wondered about that. Because three years ago, I was afraid to stand before preachers. I'd look out at a group of preachers, and I knew that they had much more formal education than I did, and I had an inferiority complex. And I'd get so tight and nervous, I could hardly open my mouth and say anything. But in the last three years, God has given me a burden for preachers and for America that I've never had before. Three years ago in Wilmington, North Carolina, I was in a sword conference speaking with Dr. Jack Howells. After I'd spoken that day, he said, I'd like to talk with you this afternoon. And I said, fine, knock on my door anytime you want to, and I'll be glad to chat with you. Dr. Howells and I took a walk. We must have walked two hours, maybe longer, I don't recall exactly. Several blocks. We walked, he talked, and I listened. He said, uh, Curtis, I, I guess in everything I'm trying to say, that really what I'm trying to say is I want you to get a burden for America. I want your burden to reach out beyond your church. And I replied, Dr. Howes, if I get a burden for America, it won't be something I get, it'll be something that's given to me. You don't get a burden, you're given a burden. I said, you pray that if God wants me to have that kind of burden, he'll give it to me. And he prayed, I'm sure. And I can say God has given me a burden for America. I think the main hope for America is in building fundamental, Bible-believing, independent, soul-winning, red-hot churches in every city across America. Amen. If someone had told me three years ago we'd have a university here, I would have laughed. As a matter of fact, I had a group of preachers in the Atlanta area to contact me and ask me about beginning a Bible college. And I said no. 
We started a grade school and a high school, and I don't want a college. We met again, and I said no. And then, through the providence of God, I met with some men in a motel downtown Atlanta. We prayed about Baptist University of America and about it merging. And I won't go through the whole story except to say that they met again in Tampa, and I would have never met the second time had I not been speaking in St. Petersburg right across the bay. And it was very convenient, so I decided I'd drive over for the fellowship. I had no idea that before that day was over, I'd be president of Baptist University of America. If I did, I may have jumped in the bay on the way over. I don't know. <laughs> but I drove over. And I met with some great men. We decided that Baptist University ought to be a reality and it ought to merge. We'd keep the name Baptist University of America. I like the name. It's a big name. I think big. There's nothing wrong with thinking big. The curse of the world that too many people is thought small. Nothing wrong with two or three gathered together, but it's a lot better if you have two or three thousand gathered together. Nothing wrong with winning two or three people to Christ, but it's a lot better when two or three thousand to Christ. Before I became a preacher and was interested in things of God, the world was headed in a different direction. And through the years, the world has gone down, down, down until now. Uh, uh, Bible reading and prayer is outlawed in the public schools. Communists are invited to speak on the campuses of universities and colleges across America and are paid very handsomely for speaking. They walk off with fifteen hundred, two thousand, three thousand dollars for one speaking engagement to espouse the communist philosophy. But you try to get on one of those campuses and preach.